Hello, Max. It's been a while. Hey, Lakesh. No, this is Pentium. Hey, Pentium. I am here just to say hello. hello. It's been a while since I've talked to you. I know Lakesh and I sound a little alike sometimes. Yeah, the hello sounded very... Yes, I like... I didn't speak to him for, for a long time. Yes, he, and he does how, want to speak to you. How is he doing? He is doing well. He has problems keeping secrets sometimes. But other than that, he is doing well. Is he uh, prohibited from speaking? Mm, not now, I don't think. Was he kind of uh, retained? He was. That's accelerated. But I, don't, I didn't notice when he said anything uh, secret. I didn't notice that. Yes, I know. He did not say it out loud, but he was about to. And they stopped him. So I that see. was why they're... He has done it too many times. He's about to speak and they have to step in. So he is... They penalized him shortly, but nothing major. Okay. I uh, support his uh, return to uh, communications. He will be back. What's new on your side? Um, we are still working on the weather and the uh, seismographic um, anomalies that are taking place and that are in effect threatening your United States. I see. Which part? Yellowstone National Park and California. I see. So the fifth species, the sharp tooth, are they really the the fifth member of the group here? Yes. So I spoke to real general. What's his name? We can tell. Ah, uh, Orokor. Are you have you met him? No. Ah, Orokor. Orokor. I've heard of him, but I do not know him. Uh huh. At this time, they are not still fully involved with the plans of Gurkfiknir. There are some question as to their authenticity with signing of the treaties, etc. So they are part, but oh, not a full part. They are on a trial basis at this time, as you might call it. So they don't need humans anymore? They do not. But historically they did. Yes. Thousands of years ago? Actually, many hundreds of years. I see. They were still eating people about 300 or 400 years ago, but not as much so. And when they became more positive? Well, there was a faction that was still eating people. I should give them more credit. But yes, there, as as a species, a full percentage of the species was not eating humans a thousand years ago. But there were some that were still eating humans up to 300 years ago because they were a renegade faction of that group and found that humans were delicious and why should they not stop eating them? They did not understand. So what if they had brains? So does every other animal in the universe have a brain? It doesn't matter. They're good food. So it it, it took a while to uh, convince them that we we didn't want them to do that for other reasons. So I see. Uh, but they were feeding the oh, but the good ones were still feeding on negative energies for a while. Yes. Were they still feeding negative energies during World War? Yes. And now they don't anymore. They still have some negative energy within them. Let me explain. They are fully connected beings, but in their primitive nature, in their, in their fourth dimensional fullness, there is still negativity that makes them whole. Does that make sense to you? Of course. And this negativity is rather extreme at times. So they are a warlike they see war as something of not 
an evil as as you might see it. Do they see war as just the way they can show who they are, to give them a personality, to make them understood where what kind of personalities they exist. They don't, after they fight you and war you, then they're your friends, you see. I see. They make friends with the people they war with because they must fight to see if they're suitable friendship material. <laughs> uh, how many of them are pacifists? About 25%. On Earth? You, I'm, are you speaking of the species? Yeah. Of their species? Yes. Yes, about 25%. A nurse? Yes. Uh-huh. But the rest are just normal, have normal traditional values. And 25% are pacifists and peacefulists. That is not traditional values for them. I understand. Not. Yes. And how many of them are outside the solar system? Oh, m many, many millions, yes. Millions, not billions. Not billions, but millions, yes. <clears throat> uh, they, their race does not seem to build as quickly because they fight so much and lose many of their people. And even on their planet, their home worlds, they fight amongst themselves for uh, leadership positions. And sometimes that means to the death. So it is still quite primitive there in their political culture. So, in time, whole families must die if you lose, so. So if you compare the influence of Gurk Fitnir on human politics and of Sharp Tooth on human politics. I mean, now Sharp Tooth is a part of Gurk Fitnir, but say four races of Gurk Fitnir versus one race. Yes, they're fine. They will I believe they will come about and see all the positivity. They are already studying what we have done and what is to be done. And many have come to our side uh, easily. There are some that are holding out. My prediction would be that the influence of sharp tools of, on our politics is maybe tenfold bigger than the influence of the remaining group in your human politics. Hmm. What do you, what's your estimate? I didn't quite understand your calculation. Because they are here, and they have been here, and they think like our military, so their power over military would be tremendous. Oh, influence. yes. Yes, They're, they would they would outthink your military in a fraction of a second. No, not fighting, but influencing. Um, oh, they could influence your military in a fraction of a second also because of the things they know about how to fight and with what weapons and what they've, they've honed in on what are the most effective weapons in the universe because um, biological weapons are the absolutely most uh, effective. I'm, I understand. I'm talking about on politics. They control our politics in many ways? They influence our politics in many ways? Do they, they influence your leadership, yes. And Gurk I don't think that you are... No, we do, not, we do not look upon that favorably. And we are in the process of talking them away from some of these politicians. They were involved with these politicians when we were talking treaties. So that was not actually part of the talks until afterwards. We wanted to make sure that they understood that we were not trying to change them as a culture, but that we were trying to ask them to be part of something greater that would be helpful to you mankind. Now their political touches, so to speak, are what they would consider to be appropriate, what we would consider to be inappropriate because they feel that there are certain leaders that are in positions that can make differences in the way things are thought of in a positive way, and there is some positivity to it. However, the, out, the further outcome is the human race being more like them and not more enlightened. Yes. So this is where we draw a difference. So my estimate is that 
The influence of sharp tools on our politics is way stronger than the influence of group thinking on human politics. Yes, and that is what we are working on as well. So I, th I see that you have been thinking about that, which is, I guess, appropriate. Oh. Mm -hmm. I guess this is one of the major questions, who is controlling us in, yes. uh, in, uh, in different ways. Yes, and you are correct that they are. And Orions are not any more influential, or are they also influential? The Orions have factions that work with certain reptilian groups, and um, but that is not where they are working right now. The Orions have a different agenda altogether at this time, because they cannot get along with the reptilians because they're too much alike. Um, and they bump heads. When they have ideas, they continue to... Yes, what is this? They continue to each stand their ground in a stubborn sort of way, so they do not get along very well. I guess that maybe Orion's left the Earth and not, are not influencing it anymore at the moment? Not at the moment. Their plans were defeated a number of years ago, probably in 2002, I think. They were very, they were very put back many years, so they left, but they are still interested in this world. How about Zetas? Are Zetas? Uh, oh, they are here, yes. Uh, involved in control of governments? N not as much, no. They do. No. Okay, let me rephrase this. Mm. Zeta control is third world. You really? Earth third world? Yes. Wow. Why? They're most comfortable there. Hmm. Can you give me more detail? I didn't know. More Zetas are more third world beings because they are attracted to things that are what you would call third world. The they are not real... How do I say this without insulting them? I cannot say it without insulting them, but they are attracted to filth. But... <laughs> Alright, we respect them anyway. Um, so, are they also in Russia? How, how big is involvement in Russia? They are not much in Russia. The reptilians are there more. Yeah, that's what I felt. Somehow Zetas are not in Russia, not much in Russia. No, they are not. Not much at all. In fact, I, don't, I cannot think of one that is there doing anything of any, any uh, empowerment of all. Uh, there, it is all reptilian, all throughout Europe and Russia. Oh, even Europe is not under Zeta? Think? No, Europe is not. More reptilian. I that area of the world is mostly reptilian, that continent. Are you talking about control of politicians or Italy, Yes, Germany, Russia, Spain, Italy, all reptilian. UK? UK has, they had some reptilian there, but they backed off because of some, they were discovered, for one thing. For, for some reason, the English are very enlightened in, on how to find reptilians. Uh -huh. And they found them, and they sort of deactivated their power. And so they are not in control of England at this time. Super, that's what I understand. You confirm what I heard elsewhere. All right. Uh, so, third of all, China is under Zetas? China is mixed. Uh -huh. is men there's many things there uh -huh. because they call in it is interesting that you would say China because China has called in many a mix of aliens to them uh -huh. and they all work in different provinces they it is funny that China is a very powerful nation that's fighting against itself within oh, really? so um, because of these several different alien species one province will be very different than another. I don't know. Okay, how about India? 
Oh, India is definitely Zeta. Yes. Really? Yes. Are they hardened in India or kind of keeping it stable? They do not really care about India as a... They are in charge of Calcutta and Delphi. Delphi is a... Delhi? Delhi, yes. Mm, yes, those two places are Zeta controlled. So are they negative there or... Yes, they're fairly negative. Yes. Fairly negative. I mean, you have to understand that's their thing. Their nature is fairly negative, but not all negative, of course. But they're very selfish. Uh -huh. And what's, so, what's their agenda? What do they do? They just get what they need. What? They they get the soils, and there's different things in the soil there that they like. Oh, minerals. And minerals in soil, and in they have, and they get. Um, the people there are easy to to control, and so they like that too. Yeah. They yeah. like the easy to control peoples. Uh huh. To help them, because all they have to do is suggest things, and they will do it. So. Uh huh. So though they don't have global ambitions, they are not competing with reptilians for global control. They know. They know better. They don't. They do know better, yes. What does it mean, they do know better? They know better than to try to encroach on reptilian because they're warlike. And Zetas are just more lazy and not warlike. Yes, I understand that. That's what so, I meant, yes. So they will not encroach on reptilians, otherwise they'll be attacked and they are not prepared for such a thing. I mean, they try to prepare, but they're too lazy in some ways to defeat them. They would not want to even want to strategize in a warlike way even though they have some negative qualities they are not really warlike they're more leisure and hedonistic sort of in some ways but uh to their own self be true and nobody else i see you confirm many of my uh notations how about spanish culture Spanish cultures have reptilian in them. Uh huh. Yes. All through South America? South America is a mixed bag. Depends on where you go. How about Peru? Peru? Yeah, Peru. Peru, interesting enough. Okay, how do we start this? Actually, there's more Pleiadians in Peru uh -huh. than there is anywhere. Well, in South America, there's more Pleiadians than anywhere else. Uh huh. And. But they are also a lot of reptilians in the Brazilian area. Uh -huh. So because of Rio de Janeiro is a large area, they, uh -huh. they have to have some control there because they want things from that. What things? Things that come from the sea nearby. Minerals? Minerals. There is, there is a culture that lives in the sea right near there, a small culture. Culture. Culture, yes. And, and they can evolve species. Yes, and then they control them. Not humans. Not humans, but they control them. They are a, what you might call mermaids and mermen. Ah. They're a small group of civilization there that they control. Why do they need them? That is a good question. They do have some telepathic ability as well, and they do serve them with some things in their culture, I guess. I do not know fully why they want them. Oh, suppose I wanted to travel somewhere, if yes. I had funds, and meet some nice aliens, where would I go? Arizona, California, Washington State, Wyoming, More of the desolate areas of these states. Colorado. New Mexico. Arkansas. All these places have many aliens. Nice ones? Yes. 
especially Arizona, would be the nicest of them. There are vortexes there that keep them very friendly, keep their energy very high. Their vibrations are unbelievably high there because of the vortexes and the natural uh, energies of the land have not been displaced. And that is one of the reasons why aliens are attracted to there and why they crash there and different things because that is a place that draws them. How about parts of Russia? Uh, is there any good part of Russia? Oh yes, there's several parts of Russia. Right in the very center, very center of Russia, there is a, a wonderful vortex that is oval shaped, which is unusual. Usually all vortexes are circular. This one, somehow, due to whatever, has become an oval and has not changed for thousands of years. It's not a great oval, but it is egg-shaped oval, kind of. If I go there, how do I find it? Um, if you talk to the people that do metaphysics, they will know what to tell you. Oh, you, don't know the name? you don't know the name of the place? I'm not to give it to you. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. I wouldn't go anyway. I don't have no, you would not go anyway. It, but it is... Ah! Oh. Okay. How about a place near Sochi? Sochi? Sochi. Near Georgia. To the east. Yeah. Oh, no. To the west. Sorry. No, I'm talking about a place to the east. From the Sochi? Yes. Yes. There is a place to the east. Uh-huh. Is there a city there? A city of aliens? No, a city of humans. Ah. I don't know. I cannot read Russian. Are these good aliens? These, the ones that live in these kind of villages are good, yes. Aliens in the villages? Yes. I would think they would live underground. How could they live in the villages? They take on human form. Ah. Is it Georgia or part of Russia? It's part of Russia. Ah. Now, one of my projects I wanted to do was to travel and take interviews and find those. You will be traveling. Ah, to do videos? You will see. And I don't need to do anything for that? <laughs> you will have enough work when you are doing that. No, I mean, to attract that travel. No, this is happening without your even knowing it. All right, um, switching to my, I'm turning off the recording here and switching to my personal things. Do you have any more advice or insight? Your previous insights were very interesting. Hmm. I don't even know what my previous insights were, but I know about you somewhat. So may, perhaps my insights just were drawn from how I knew you. So, but... I do have a poem for you. Oh, okay. Turn it on the video. I actually will not delete that. <laughs> we keep, keep recording. I, I traveled for a while on the ship here. So I have memories of home. And I got a little, what you call, home delayed, homesick. Homesick. Nostalgia. Nostalgic, and I was thinking about my planet, and I wrote a small poem about it. Please. If I... I'm almost now embarrassed because it is a little personal, but... It's what I was feeling at the time. I miss the shiny jagged rocks and trees. The shiny stones, the crystals that lay about uncut and raw. The sky remains cool, but the air whips by me, and I never know what to think the next smell will be, 
but I miss those crags in the rock, in the mists on the lakes. They call me back from this place where I am and surround me as if I'm at home once again. And I walk, and as I walk, it all disintegrates and fades away. And someone speaks, and I am here. Thank you. That's a very human poem. I could have written it. We are very human in some ways. We translate our poetry into human because there are no phrases for some things of the, which we say. Here is Mandelstam poem in Russian. Еще не умер ты, еще ты не один, Покуда с нищенкой подругой Ты наслаждаешься величием равнин, И мглой, и холодом, и вьюгой. В роскошной нервности, в могучей, В роскошной бедности, в могучей нищете Живи покойно утешен, Десятизначные леса почти что те, И снег хрустит в глазах, Как чистый хлеб безгрешен. I wish I could speak Russian and understand it. It is a difficult language for earthlings to learn, I am finding. What prevents you from getting it? It's, well, it's, a, it's a matter of me changing the translator over and translating it that way. That's how we usually do it. Yeah, they, However, I'm in the English mode and it would, I just stay there. Yeah, of course. But uh, can you just look it up later? Or are you busy with other stuff? One moment. I could possibly look it up, but... Not now, okay. I'm just, you know, more uh, interested in technology. You know, it should be very easy for you to look up any language. Any oh, yes, right? well, yes, it's easy to look up, but... Yeah, I'm inviting... Uh, my alien friends to download languages into my uh, mind. Ah, if there's any room in there, they will. <laughs> I can free some. Free some room for them so that they can put some in you. <laughs> Maybe uh, you know, communist party history can be dumped. <laughs> oh, why would you want that? Uh, that's what we were studying for many years in Russia. <laughs> I left it when I was 33 years old. Uh, that is okay. Basi. What? Basi Kaposa. Basi Kaposa. There are aliens here now. They are observing how you are now. What is it about you now that is different? Hmm. I'm scared a bit of reptilians. I get a little bit of headache and I'm a little sick. And I'm stuck. Usually I have one or two ideas which get me excited. And here I'm stuck. I'm not excited about anything in particular. I think they are here to restart you in your highest excitement. I'm Zambahat Shandikalari Mantoli. There was another consideration that logically uh, all the alien technologies are already in your hands and you know developing Human technologies doesn't seem to be that that tangible. Let me explain. Technology is not where we are at. Technologies can be tampered with. Technologies can be illogical and make little sense at times when it comes to spiritual things. 
technology is tampered with. Technology is fallible. Telepathy and telekinesis. The world of the psychic is actually more tangible to me than technology. Who is speaking? Is it painted? I've told you. Alright, sorry. Can you Call me Zala. Spiritual things are more important. I understand that, but... Zala. I am Zala. Hi, Zala. I have a much longer name which I've given to you on your tape. Alright. But call me Zala. Alright. Yes, technologies are not where the answer lies. The growth of the spirit is where things lie. However, with technology you can do things you cannot do with those who are not psychic, telekinetic, telepathic, or otherwise intellectual. However, they exist that use telepathy and no intellect whatsoever. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, <laughs> but I'm an engineer. How do I make money? I can't make money spiritually. I need to support my family. Yes, you have primitive ways. The, the body needs food and home and it's very fragile. It is fragile here, yes. It is fragile here, yes. I have only come to tell you that technology is not full answer for you, but you will understand that more soon. Thank you. Are you a reptilian? Yes. A sharp tooth one? <sighs> no? No. I see. Thank you for your visit. I'm sorry if I frightened you. No, you are not. No, you didn't. Welcome. I will go now. Thank you much. Good. <laughs> Jagged sun. Tempest angular across Vincent sand. Licensed thought, rent to the spirit of sky, costing nothing, frantically looking, speaking little and yet. A volume has been said, and likely no light but all light itself in one speck of sand, bursting forth under the dark sun, soaking in dreamlike pictures, but yet becoming real at the next step, and tangent thought is more dangerous than mist, in the valleys of time, yet somewhere there is precious mobility that cannot be stabilized except with your lips and with your thoughts. I understand. Jak wam trałuju prorastu, popróbuju kłam do cienusa, jak poczka cianieca Chrystu, se ważda nie wrasnuca, a dażdę uto rasvisti, kada i jo nikto nie widzi, to już na niera sablisti, i sąchnitki z wysąca.
They are a rampant ego flying foul, yet light tinkles in them, and they will not let it come forth. The light bursting in their ears, but not in their eyes or their souls. Frustrated images running and seeking only what they desire. The tentacles of time which do not exist chokes them anyway. The tentacle of time which don't exist chokes them anyway. It's wonderful. A good translation also. Hello. Hey, Jane. Hey. Where was I? <laughs> now that last couple things were totally not heard at all. By you? Not by me. I was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I was like floating somewhere. And I'm going, where am I? <laughs> I'm floating somewhere. I don't hear anything. <laughs> it's interesting. And then all of a sudden I'm back. Yeah, this poetry, last two poems were, I experienced the last poem was really well translated. Oh, good. I wonder how is it possible, you know. They either use the advanced translator or a human poet. Oh, okay. Tentacles of time, how do you like it? Tentacles of time. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way, have you? Of course not. Tentacles of time. Actually, I can, I can pretty much see that. <laughs> yeah, you can relate to that, I guess. <laughs>